Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Shalimar Paints Limited Q1 FI24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ronak Jain from Orient Capital, the investor relation partner. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Ronak. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you and welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Shalimar Paints Limited. Today on this call, we have Mr. Ashok Kumar Gupta, managing director along with senior management team. This conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations as of today. Actual results may differ materially. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. A detailed safe harbor statement is given on page two of the company's investor presentation, which has been uploaded on the stock exchange and company's website as well. With this, I hand over the call to Mr. Ashok Gupta for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome, my friends, to this conference call for the first quarter of FI24. Uh, we had another exciting quarter until June 23. Uh, we improved our uh, top line by around 14%. And But more than that, I think we are in the right direction. And as you know, we have an earmark on a journey to acquire more market share. Our market share has been quite low. And uh, in that direction, we have been continuously working on increasing our top line. Last year, we increased our top line by around 35 to 40%. Again, in the first quarter itself, we were able to increase the top line by more than what the industry has been doing. And towards that end, we have been taking a lot of actions including increasing our workforce, including uh, you know, increasing our warehousing, setting up a new R&D, investing in plans. So many things are lined up and so many things are being done. Because we are doing so many things, so obviously the expenses are going up, particularly fixed expenses, which normally are remain fixed, they will go up in the short run, but they will give us a benefit in the long run. So seeing that, you will see there will be some pressure on the margins for the time being, but when, as and when it starts giving results, this will prove to be very beneficial. With this uh, opening remarks, let me uh, hand over to my colleague Devinda Dogra, who is the CFO, to give you the financial position. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for attending this call and participating in Salimar's growth journey. On 11th of this month, our board approved our quarterly financial results uh, for the company. In the first quarter of the year, we reported a total income of uh, 127, 127 crores with a growth of 14% in value terms and 22% in volume terms over last year's same quarter. On the margin front, we were at 31.7% gross margins, which is an improvement of 4% over previous quarter and 4.6% over same quarter last year. On EBITDA, we recorded a net negative EBITDA of INR 3.02 CR and a net loss of 10.27 CR. Last year uh, quarter, we had a negative EBITDA of, of 1.8 crores and net loss of 9.65 crores. In this quarter, there are two important highlights as uh, Ashokji has highlighted. We continue our to incur expenditures towards growth uh, we incurred uh, incremental employee expenditure and uh, we granted ESOPs and there were extension activities in supply chain. Uh, so uh, around 5.16 CR was incurred on employee, incremental employee cost, ESOP around 61 lakhs, supply chain we incurred around 59 lakhs and there was one time exceptional cost of stock, provision for stock. Had it not been there, we have we would have been, a beta, beta would have been at uh, 4.65 CR which is approximately 3.6% uh, of, the, of the total income. So that's the financials for the quarter. I hand over back to Mr. Gupta. 
so thank you, Devinder. So now we will open for question answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Mr. Amit from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my first question is with regards to uh, the KTEX, which is recently around, I think, last week. I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you, Mr. Amit. Sir, are you on your hands-free? Yeah. So may I request you to uh, switch to your hands because your voice is not very clear, sir. Just a second. Am I audible now? Yes. Yeah. Sir, my first question is with regards to the CAPEX, uh, which was announced recently, like last week. So as I understand, we are uh, taking the capacity from the existing uh, 78 million liters per annum to 180, right? Uh, between this year and the next year. So on, on this, my, my question is, you know, on the existing capacity, we are, you know, barely utilizing 50% itself, you know, at this point in time. So I want to just understand uh, what what is the exact requirement of scaling up this massive uh, uh, you know capacity and what is the way forward? Are we you know thinking of having a rapid increase in market share, increase in sales? So I just wanted to understand on this part. Sure. So let me give you a brief of the strategy we want to follow. You know, Shalimar has been a legacy company with uh, the plant which was set, set up quite some time back with our systems and processes which were significantly old. The times are changing and we have been suffering because we had not changed in tune with the times. Our production cost is higher than the competition currently. And one of the reason is our plants are still using old technologies, old system. Many of the things we are using are still manual. These things Correct. hamper our production. They also affect our quality as well as they affect our servicing. Now, in case we have to compete with the competition, we have to compete with the players in the market who are having modern technology, who are using automated systems, then we find ourselves at a disadvantage. So the first step we took this year was that we will bring ourselves at par with the competition to ensure that we have the requisite capability to fight competition. Towards that end, we have taken four or five actions. The first action we have taken is our product range and our product quality and our product formulation and our product cost should be in line with competition. For that, we are setting up a medium level R&D facility in Nasik. This facility should be up and operational by October or November. This is the first step because you need to have the latest product and the latest uh, formulations. Second thing, having had the latest products, we need to have production facilities. Our production facilities, as I told you, are mostly manual. Only thing we are doing is we are bringing in automatic systems, modernized systems of production. We are not deliberately increasing capacity, but when you change from manual to automatic, the capacity becomes multiple times. For example, today we are doing most of the filling manually. It takes maybe four hours, five hours, six hours to fill up. If I do it automatically, it may take one, one and a half hours. See the extent of capacity addition we get. Along with that, 
Right. There are many other infrastructure facilities we are developing, which will again facilitate faster working. So our primary focus in our modernization is not towards capacity, but towards uplifting the processes of manufacture. Now these processes will result in additional capacity, and that's why you are seeing capacity addition. But the primary target is modernization and automation to the level which is already existing in the competition. We are not doing something more than that. We are just trying to catch up with them. I got your point, sir. So my second question is, uh, could you also talk about, so in the press release it was mentioned that we would be launching few more products in the coming months and quarters. So if you could just talk a bit on that, number one, and number two, uh, we've also understood that there has been a massive hiring in the company in the last three, four months. So if you could just give color on that, you know, these hirings have been done in which functions, sales, operations, if you could just uh, elaborate in the, on, on these two aspects. Sure, definitely, our pleasure. So my colleague Kuldeep, who is an expert in the sales and marketing front, he is going to talk about uh, what is his plan on the on launching part of it, and then I will talk about the hiring part. So Kuldeep, please. Hi. So um, coming back to the new product launches, so if you look at our product range today, we are operating our addressable market is only 65 to 70 percent. If you remove few categories and if you look at uh, not being present, so to say, in project sales. Now uh, there are some categories uh, which uh, actually have given a good uh, what you call as uh, growth uh, to the industry in the last two years. Like uh, if we talk about waterproofing, if we talk about wood coatings, these are the categories which have propelled the growth of the industry in the last two years and we are not present in these two categories. So we are going to launch, uh, we are going to launch it maybe between September and October. We are going to launch wood coatings and we are going to enhance our portfolio of waterproofing products. So that is what is uh, going to come. And uh, there are uh, also some products lined up in emulsion category, which will be unique to category kind of products, which we are working upon and they will be launched maybe in next two months time. So that was the part one. And uh, second part in terms of the, the hiring if we talk about, so it has been, yeah. So um, Mr. Gupta is going to talk about the hiring part. Yeah. Thank you, Pudeep. So as sure. you saw, our idea on product launch is that our product range should be almost at 90% of the competition. So we are going to launch significant number of products before the season, that is before October. Um, and to us, because we are launching new products, because we are increasing our product range, we are increasing our warehousing, we are increasing our uh, production capacity, so we need more sales people. So we have done a lot of hiring in the last uh, 12 to 14 months. About 60 to 70 percent has been in the sales area, mostly frontliners, sales people, feet on the street. 10 percent has been, 10 to 15 percent research and uh, development, as I told you, only center is coming, so we need good scientists for that purpose. We are almost doubling our uh, scientist uh, number. And then another 20% will be in operations, because we, we are going in for uh, higher level of technology in the plant, we need equally capable people to run the plant. So typically it is 60-70% sales, 10-15% uh, in R&D, and another 15-20% in operations. I got this, sir. Thank you very much, sir. If I have any other questions, I'll come back in the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move on to the next question, a reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one. We take the next question from the line of Janice Cheda from Spark. Please go ahead, sir. Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, so my question is number one on the industry, uh, as you are saying that you are getting closer to the competition, but what is your view on the competition as in there are new players such as JSW and uh, Grasim also coming in, so can you give, give a bit on how do you see the industry developing? Uh, you are right, 
JSW Paint has already entered the market. Grassim and others are also entering it. And uh, so number of players are bound to increase. Again, my colleague Kuldeep, who is an expert in this area, I will talk about it. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks, uh, sir. Uh, so two things uh, as far as industry is concerned. See, uh, uh, just have a uh, sense in terms of, uh, uh, see, at least uh, if we look at the CAGR in the industry, it has been 10 to 10 percent in the last 10 years' time. And as such, some four to five thousand crore of business is getting generated every year. This is incremental in nature. So, and the second point here I would like to say is that uh, in India, at least fifty to sixty percent of the surfaces are still to be painted. Now, why I'm making these kind of statistical points is basically there's a lot of uh, demand which is going to come for paint in future also. And as many players come, the market is only going to get expanded. And it will benefit all because many um, any new entrant will come out with different chemistries, different products, and stuff like that, which will uh, actually expand the market, and which is going to benefit all. So that is that is how the industry is going to. And uh, as far as uh, ourselves are concerned, we uh, we have made it very clear from the last one year that. Uh, we are going to have a 2x growth that which we have targeted for ourselves. We will be in the line of 2x growth as far as industry is concerned. So we have been maintaining 2x growth from the last five quarters now, including this quarter when the industry has grown by 7.3% and we are already at a 14.6% this 2x industry growth, which will maintain and going uh, forward as well. Thank okay. you, Kundi. So I may just add here for your knowledge that uh, as a byproduct of so many people entering the market, there is likely to be clutter of brands. Now, when there is a clutter, the noise noise goes up. Too many people. So people like us, whose whose voice is low, gets an advantage. So it's possible that in this clutter, in this noise, we may be able to place ourselves better and get a higher share of the market. So uh, are you going so going forward? Uh, are you going to spend incrementally higher on marketing and advertising? Significantly. So till now our market spend used to be even less than 2%, but this year you will see our market spend has gone much, much higher as will be talks of multiples. So this time our market spend will be multiple of what we were doing earlier. So we will be spending around 4 to 5% of total top line in marketing? Yes, it will be more than that. Okay. And uh, secondly, if I look at your shareholding, I think Stella Infra holds around 25% uh, shareholding in the overall uh, holding structure. And uh, uh, are there any warrants that are pending, or pending to be converted into equity in next uh, one or two quarters? Uh, yeah, I, in October there are warrants which are likely to be converted. So conversion is somewhere in October, so those warrants will automatically get converted in October. So post conversion, what will be the shareholding uh, going forward? I'll have to study that. I'll have to go detail. But I think it will become perhaps uh, definitely more than 25%. It can be 28, 30% something. I haven't done the calculations detailing. But uh, no, it will be more than 25%. Yeah, we, we can take this offline. Uh, and my, one last question. Will, will infra market benefit you in any way? Is there any strategy charted out with infra market as well? Uh, I just uh, missed your question, please. I can get it properly. Yeah, uh, I am asking, will Insta market, uh, with, uh, with this tie-up with Insta market, is there any strategy that has been uh, charted out for you to grow through Insta market stores? At the moment, uh, Insta market is a basic investor. So as they are in the building section, so they have, they are opening some multi-product stores. And our Shalima paints will also be marketed through those multi-product stores. Uh, but is there, I mean, there is no dedicated uh, strategy that is there with the company. Since they own around 25%, I mean, they have some financial interest in the business as well. Yeah, you are right. They have got a financial interest in the company. Since this particular idea of opening store is a new one, it is something which is still evolving, still developing. Some stores have been opened and uh, footfall has yet to mature up. 
So it's at the beginning of the cycle, but as I mentioned to you, we will definitely be using their channel as a channel of sales for ourselves. Okay. And any uh, so open offers that can happen because of the conversion of forex? I think the rules regarding open offer are clear, so the, those rules have, will be followed. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital Advisor. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so just uh, following up on this question on intra-market, uh, are we the exclusive supplier to these stores for paints, or are they going to have you guys as well as some other competitors in those stores? So currently, in some market have opened few stores, not too many, and uh, wherever they have mm -hmm. opened stores, at the moment, to the best of my knowledge, I think they are only keeping Shalimar, but there is no system as such which bars them from not having other products. But to the best of my knowledge, currently, they are keeping only Shalimar. Okay. And given the comments, Shoji, that you mentioned about investments, uh, in our branding, marketing, and uh, talent upgrade, uh, you know, what is your thinking about uh, turning EBITDA positive? Is it a few quarters away or a few years away? If you can just uh, give some uh, commentary around that. So if you see, the EBITDA is not exactly a few quarters or few years away. Even in this quarter, we were EBITDA positive. But for the fact that in this quarter, we spent more five and a half crore rupees extra on manpower alone. If that five and a half was right. not there, you would have been a bit of positive in this quarter only. Now, it was a deliberate strategy. We thought about it. Should we be careful with expense? Not do it. Do it later. Uh, one thing which was happening is people, new people, so many new people are coming, they are all pouching on uh, manpower. The sales people are in shortage. So if you don't take them now, Correct. we will miss the bus. Second thing is that, uh, you know, it's a question of your DNA. Now, our, our parents, which is basically Jindals as well as Insura, both DNA is aggressive. If you see their nature, their, their habits, their uh, history, their legacy has been very aggressive. So these people are not conservative. This, they will see profits coming whenever they come, but at the most, at the time, like, so all the, both of Jindal as well as Infra have always been aggressive with the market share, with the, gaining the market and spending the money. So I think in line with their genes, in the, line with their thinking, we are also going aggressive. And we are going as aggressive on all fields. We are full blast now. We are going on manpower hiring. We are spending on offices. We are spending on warehousing. We are spending a lot of money on warehousing. We are uh, modernizing our plant. Our plants will be very good. In fact, our target is our plants and warehouses should be as good as a supermarket. So we are doing a lot of things by which, and let me tell you, as, as I told you, products, we are almost going to be 90% of the product range of competition. Our R&D section is going to be new, and we are, we are going to have around more than 40, 45 scientists working there. So you see the kind of whole, whole this is almost like a, you know, revolution for so far as Shalimar is concerned. It's a totally different organization you will be seeing. With this kind of aggression, with this kind of thing, it may take two or three quarters to really fruits for to come up. But there is not, nothing else can happen but the fruits to come. So we are very hopeful that the fruits will be definitely there. And that's why this aggression, all this aggression has always paid the, both the groups in the past. And we are sure this will pay this year, this company and the time as well. Right. Now, I think that's very helpful commentary, but my question was that, um, you know, you have given that EBITDA walks in chart, uh, and I understand, you know, you're investing a lot. So the question is that whether this investment will continue for the next few quarters, or are you suggesting that in the next quarter itself, we will turn EBITDA positive after making all these investments? Yeah, see, next, the, this extra expenditure was once there is a done thing. It's not going to increase by 5 crores each quarter. That's a, it's, a, it's kind of a one-time decision you take to fill up all the posts. For example, all the, all the products we are going to launch, with that we will be 90-95% of the competition product range. We don't have to do more. So I think uh, the bulk of the things are passed now. Now we are looking for something like EBITDA positive. 
and in days to come, uh, we are not talking of years, in quarters to come, we will have it about you. Okay, okay, understood. And on the balance sheet side, what is our net debt right now? Okay, uh, balance sheet side, the net worth is around 235, uh, 225 CR as on June. And debt. Uh, yeah. So debt, yes, debt I was asking uh, about net uh, debt, you know, growth. You are referring to a net debt? The net debt is uh, to the tune of around, around 75 CR. 75, okay. So, uh, just going back to the earlier question about uh, the competitive intensity, uh, are we pricing lower than the some of these leading uh, players uh, to gain market share, or what is our strategy to uh, increase our market share, which is obviously uh, has been quite small historically? Uh, so, uh, whether we gain market share or we stay where we are. Our pricing is marginally lower than the competition, maybe 2-3% or 5%. It's not very low, depends on product to product. In fact, in some of the products, we are higher than the competition. We are in some of the solvents, in some of the products which are where Shalima has a better brand presence. Our products are slightly expensive than the competition. So, uh, but on an average, we may be 3-4% lower, but this gap will remain irrespective to the fact whether we go higher market share or not because uh, in consumer goods, particularly in paints, it's how you market, how your distribution is rather than the price differential per se, which will help you in increasing the market share. So, so do you have any targets like in the next two, three years, you want to uh, go from your current market share to X, Y, or Z uh, kind of market share? So you can just give some directional commentary around that. So we have a we have a plan we have a vision we have a dream of uh, having growth as my colleague mentioned uh, at least uh, 20 to 25 percent year after year the industry is going 10 12 percent so we want to grow double that amount so 20 to 25 percent year after year growth is what we are targeting obviously it will mean that our market share will go increase. Great, great. And my last question is on the 190 crore capex that you have uh, discussed. Uh, how are we going to finance that? If you can just uh, give some color on that side. So as normally happens, around 60 percent, 65 percent, we will try to get the balance. We have our, our uh, resources with us. We will be using that. But it depends. You know, it is not necessary that same ratio will go. Going forward, we will see how the banks react to it how our own finances are, and depending on that, the situation can also change. Understood. Okay. That's all I have, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hiten Barucha from Sequin Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first question is on the conversion of warrants, which are going to happen, I think, next month in October. So what is the amount which we are going to receive? So if all the warrants are converted as per the issuers, then uh, we should be expecting about 100 crore plus from this amount. 100 crore. Plus. So this 100 crore is going to be used for this capex which we are planning? Hi, it will be used for all the purposes, capex, working capital, anything else which is there. We will see how to use it, but that is a, uh, the amount which is likely to come. Okay, okay. And some, uh, next question is on the employee cost. As you mentioned, this employee cost, uh, more or less a hiring has been done. And now this uh, employee cost of around 17 crore run rate, which is going to sustain at this limit, it's not going to go up from here, right? So we are expecting it will marginally increase. It's not that we won't have any more people, but it won't mm -hmm. be, there won't be a dramatic increase. So if it is uh, 17, 18 crore now, it will go to 18, 19 crore, but it won't be as much an increase as happened last time. 18, 19 crore. Okay, okay. And by this, after when you mentioned we are going, we are looking for a beta positive in coming to to uh, in coming quarters. 
so is it uh, okay to assume like we are going to exit this year by a beta positive this year itself by end of this year maybe we are trying we are trying yeah okay yes, okay thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen if you wish to ask a question you may press star and 1 We take the next question from the line of Janish Chera from Spark. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for the follow-up question opportunity. Uh, as you mentioned that you are going full blast in the season uh, upcoming season. So what gives you that confidence as to you know have so much of capex in front? Like how? Where do you see the demand coming from? That gives you so much of confidence to give uh, to go so aggressive into. the paint business now so two things one uh, every business has to make sure that the demand is there and it knows how to capture it now uh, most people know that shalima is a legacy brand and our products are at par or slightly better than the competition where we have been lacking till now is in aggression we were quite conservative in our approach our plants were old our marketing expense was uh, next to negligible our manpower was very limited so we were a very conservative company and we were kind of you know not really achieving that kind of thing which we could have achieved now we have turned the um, gears we are becoming aggressive we are investing everywhere so so in so we are seeing the results as you as my colleague mentioned in last five quarters our growth in sales is much higher than the competition which is self shows that our strategy is paying off and that is when we have just started the aggression they started the uh, accelerator with the kind of uh, push we are giving now i am hopeful my results will be better than what they were last five quarters okay so if everything plays out according to what you have planned what will be the fy27 so 3 years on the line numbers look like in terms of uh, top line and profitability margins if i do continue to grow around 25 plus uh, growth year after year hopefully we will be crossing 1000 cr by 3 years no i don't know when we will do it but we should be doing it maybe 3 years 4 years 2 years depending on but we are looking at that we should be growing at around 20 25% year on year and in terms of gross margin and uh, ebitda margins what are the numbers that you look at our gross margin currently is around uh, uh, 33 34% we are definitely looking at 35% plus and uh, ebitda of course will be positive in due course but uh, how much about the margin are you targeting we are seeing see the industry works anywhere between 12 to 16% we are saying that we should be at least in the range of 5 to 8% in couple of years 8% and will we be cash flow positive or will we still require a cash in terms of working capital and uh, mainly over the uh, dealer distribution network no we uh, we are we are targeting to be cash flow positive uh and in terms of uh, uh agreements that you have with your distributors what are the uh, credit cycle over there and how are like mainly most of the distributors as of now market asian paints because of the uh, quick credit that they get uh what is the policy that we are going to follow so we are following the industry practices industry typically gives i think 45 to 60 days credit, and we also follow the same. My of course, my again, my my colleague Kuldeep, who is a sales head, can uh, you know talk about it. Sure. So uh, two things. One, in terms of distribution, if you look at uh, historically, our distribution uh, dealer reach has improved, and it has significantly improved in the last few years' time. And we have approximately, if we look at the last five quarters, we have added some two thousand new dealers to our uh, overall distribution. Which has contributed to 14 to 15 percent of our sales. I believe the second question which you had asked was about the margins and all. That's how it was. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. So this was for, uh, as far as distribution equity increasing quarter on quarter is concerned. And secondly, in terms of the margins, 
almost as we mentioned, it is uh, in a dealer network program. Uh, the what what uh, is being offered by all the companies is rebates or schemes for the dealers. So almost we are in line, barring uh, what you call as solvent based. Uh, what it uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, in water base, we are three to four percent more in terms of rebates, and as far as solvents is concerned, we are equivalent to the industry, and some products we are higher than the industry. So basically, if I'm understanding your strategy correctly, it will be more like direct marketing, which will lead to demand uh, to the distributors, and that is how distributors will start uh, offering Shalimar prints yes. to the customers. So the more focus will be on the direct advertising and marketing bit. Yeah. So for the industry, it doesn't operate on a distributor model. Although many companies have now started in terms of appointing distributors to make inroads into the uh, rural areas, but otherwise it is a direct to dealer kind of a concept uh, which is being followed by the industry. And our focus will be on tier one cities, or it will be more on the tier three, tier four kind of cities. So if you look at the currently we are focusing on tier 2, tier 3 cities because uh, uh, whereas in tier 1, uh, under Sanctuary you have a strong brand equity, uh, you don't get inroads. Uh, so we are strategically we are focusing on tier 2, tier 3 but uh, with the marketing expenses going up and we starting using all the social media levers to promote our products, we are going to get into tier 1 cities as well. Okay. Okay, so thank you so much. That's all from my side. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Shrenik Mehta from Yes Bank. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to know what is the unencumbered cash and liquid assets as on uh, uh, quarter end? So the unencumbered cash is to the tune of around uh, 60 CR. We have cash and equivalents of 60 CR. Uh, as on 30th June, that's an incumbent. Yeah. And liquid assets, uh, something you might have stored in mutual funds or something invested in mutual funds? We don't fund. have uh, anything in the mutual fund. Uh, the cash and bank balance in the also includes the FT components. Uh, all our cash balances are part into the short term uh, FDRs. So 50 crores? Yeah, it's, uh, it's around 60 TR overall, 55 uh, something in uh, which is an encumbered and rest in cash and some other liquid assets. Uh, yeah, okay, and just wanted to understand this dealer network. Uh, the numbers in the presentation show that uh, new dealer edition is 646. So these are exclusive Shalimar paint dealers or these dealers stock uh, other competitive uh, competitor paint uh, also? So typically in industry, if you look at today, 80 to 90 percent of the dealer base is MBO, which is multi brand outlets, which store at least, if not all the four, all the five, at least two to three brands. Each each of these dealer networks uh, sells in terms of the brand. So I would uh, say in our case, whatever number has been opened up in the first quarter is all MBOs. None of them is uh, an exclusive store, but all of them are multi brand outlets. And just for my understanding, how much of the sales would be customer driven and how much would be as in dealer driven? As in customer has a certain preference, you would want this uh, paint from X company and how much can a dealer put? Yeah. So if you if you look at the trends, definitely are changing, but if we look at how it is today, uh, roughly 45 to 55% of the sale is happening on the recommendation of a dealer or a painter. And uh, uh, the balance is happening by the customer choice, which is being led by the brand equity. So, uh, but going forward, definitely this uh, scheme would be more towards the customer preference, because with with, with uh, a lot of knowledge being around paint generated by all the companies, and uh, that that's going to the customer know-how and the awareness is going to go up, and which is going to help the customer to choose which brand to use. And uh, definitely that will bring a, a change in terms of the customer preference also. But if you look at the current uh, scheme of things, it is uh, say 45 to 55 percent is on the recommendation of, or a, of a painter or a dealer. Okay, and last question is uh, of this 190 crore capex, how much of it has been started? So, uh, the initial work has already started. Perhaps we might have already spent 30, 40 crores, maybe even more. But it is work in progress. So, there is nothing like uh, this much has already gone. 
all some part has gone, some advances have gone, some experiment has been done. But we are already on the track. Everywhere things are stuck. Okay. And one more thing, on the industrial side, uh, industrial pain side, how is this business model, as in it's not pushed through dealers, so what is the, as in what is the strategy for the industrial side, as in? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Kripal, just to give you a brief, in terms of industrial for us has been doing better than our decorative business in the last five quarters, and if you look at it, it is double the decorative growth which we have garnered in the last five quarters. And uh, uh, there are many reasons to it. Uh, the, the, the government push also on the infrastructure and stuff like that. Uh, that could be one of the reasons when we are getting better attractions in this business. The second is that uh, we have had some good orders, like if I have to give you an example, uh, Neon product, uh, project in Saudi Arabia, which was a big and Shalimar was the only one uh, brand which was approved out there. Uh, similarly, the tallest bridge in the country, Chinab River, which was also kind of uh, painted by Shalima, which is also uh, one of the achievements. So just to give you a flavor in terms of we have been getting better traction in the in towards, uh, industrial side, and which I see the momentum continues. We are adding new customers. We have added at least 100 to 200 customers in the last two year, one, year, one year, one and a half years time. Uh, we continue our strategy of expansion and extraction. We are going to both in the decorative space and the industrial space, we are going to increase our distribution equity and uh, kind of garner better sales from the existing dealers. That's how our strategy is. And uh, with, uh, with, uh, with some of the projects, uh, some of the verticals which we have kind of picked up for ourselves, when we want to double our business, like the pipeline business, when we are already, so to say, leaders in that, and we want to strengthen our position in that particular segment. And uh, apart from that, one or two verticals we have picked up into the industrial space, wherein we are going to get exponential growth. And for that, everything is kind of um, planned in terms of how to get that growth, in terms of new product introduction, in terms of getting uh, acquiring new customers, uh, putting the team, a relevant team into those verticals. It's already done. And uh, in times to come, definitely we'll, we will get a better uh, kind of um, results from industrial side as well. So the industrial side has better margins than the decorative as the, there is no dealer. Is that correct? No. So it is both. Uh, see, it depends upon the vertical. Like some of the verticals wherein it's a B2B kind of a scope where we are directly, uh, where the consumption happens, we supply directly to them. Uh, but uh, there are one or two verticals also wherein you, it's a dealer route. Wherein like in dealer business, industrial dealer business, wherein we have typically like we have in the decorative business, we have a dealer network. And uh, uh, if you have to put a figure to it, roughly 40% of our business, 40 to 50% happens uh, directly, and 30% happens to uh, dealer network, and the rest happens to contractors and all. Okay, so 30 to 40 percent of your industrial business happens to dealer, and rest is uh, with your own employee. Yeah, contractor, yeah. Rest happens okay. directly. Okay, got it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Sonal Minas from Precis Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Sir, I wanted to understand uh, what would be directionally the target for uh, EBITDA margins for the next financial year, FY24. Secondly, also understand uh, what are the targets for gross margin expansion uh, year on year because that's something which is a little stickier than anything else that you can save on the cost side. And uh, uh, but just want to get an understanding of these two first. If I can ask them the next question later, I'll ask. Yeah. Yeah, you see, uh, gross margin, as I mentioned, we are close to 33, 34. We are now targeting 35% plus going forward, both with improved product mix as well as by improved process, which, for which we already do a lot of capex. Mm -hmm. So 35 to 36, the, the margin competition is already at 40% or 40% plus. So we still will be 5% away from the competition, or maybe more than 5% away. And uh, with this kind of gross margin, 
EBITDA should also be in the range of 5% plus, 5 to 7% maybe, but it may be some time before we can achieve that. Okay. So just from a mix perspective, uh, since our gross margins and EBITDA margin, like what you're talking about for next year, are, five, are roughly 8 to 10% lower than the competition. Uh, but you mentioned that our pricing is maybe 2 to 3% lower than the, lower than them. So is the delta, if my understanding is correct, if the incremental delta that the gap that we see there is uh, A, the product mix also linked to what we leave in the channel uh, or is there anything else that we should understand? Uh, there's something more as well. So one is the process cost. Most of our processes we have are manual. So they, uh, definitely there's a important function you have all, all the automated processes. Second, our uh, consumption of raw materials because of the uh, in the latest developments which take place in the formulations, they get an advantage. Then the then the volume our volumes are low as compared to competition, so they get the economics of scale. So if you see, whenever there is a gap in the gross margins or in the profitability, whole slew of factors are there. So you are purchase pricing, your consumptions, your wastages, and then your pricing, your product mix, all of them play a role, and they are playing the role in our case also. And that's why we are looking at each one of them. Got it. And sir, just like three, four years out, how confident you are that your gross margins uh, can inch towards 40%? What are the capital impediments uh, for uh, the company to actually reach those numbers? Because uh, capital has been a challenge in the past as well to hit uh, growth numbers. Just trying yeah, to understand capital, that. What capital are was one of our biggest uh, bottlenecks. And now that we have devolved it to, some, to a good extent, we think capital we should not be a challenge anymore. Uh, we are on on way. I uh, see that gap of eight to ten percent, which stands today, should reduce to four to five percent. Four to five percent gap may still remain for a couple of factors, which we are still far away. One is the volume. Whatever said and done, it will take a, quite a while to reach anywhere in any other competition volumes. The second is the product mix. We are still in the lower half of the product uh, mix for the competition, and uh, and then, of course, you know, all of the factors of uh, uh, productivity and things like this. But if we can reduce this gap of 8 to 10 percent to 4 or 4 percent or 5 percent, I think we would have done a good job. Got it, sir. Okay. If I can just squeeze in another question, is it okay or should I cut in a few? Go ahead, go ahead. Sir, so, uh, just because uh, the promoters are not hands on involved in this particular business. Just wanted to understand uh, what are the drivers for you as a leadership, uh, like as in, in terms of uh, what incentive structures do you have uh, in this business, uh, apart from ESOPs, to uh, where we can say that you hit those milestones and therefore uh, you are also incentivized to stay for or be long term uh, there in the business. So, uh, see, ESOPs are a way of rewarding, particularly on the uh, wealth front. So the way we reward our colleagues, our you know senior team is by way of increasing their wealth through ESOPs, and that is a primary means. Apart from that, we also have incentive schemes linked to the profitability, linked to EBITDA. We have uh, profit link uh, incentive plans. So these are the two basic methods by which we incentivize our team to achieve that desired results. And has the team, the leadership been hitting the, the profitability based numbers? Because uh, there is a motivation issue as well, which is involved uh, along with uh, how the turnaround happens. Uh, it takes a little longer than what is anticipated. So uh, have the team been incentivized in that regard, uh, hitting those numbers? Just trying to understand the subjective part of it. Definitely. So as and when we have, we are profitable, so if there's improvement in margins, then there's of course incentive given to the people. There's a beta positive, it will be incentive is linked to that. And not only on the beta positive and margins, even on individual elements, like increasing of the revenue, increasing in the reduction of the cost, and on all parameters, there are some or the other incentive links. So there are around 30, 40 parameters on which, different parameters on which incentives are given to different people. Got it, sir. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. This is from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, we consider that as the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ashok for closing comments. Uh, thank you, my dear friends. Uh, it was a really lively session. I enjoyed as much uh, talking to you, answering to you, as you might have perhaps uh, you know, got interested in. And I can tell you, uh, we have been on the right track. We have got a very good team now. And uh, the team is good. The infrastructure is going to be good. The facilities are going to be good. And there is no reason for us not to have a good results as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Shalimar Paints Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.